Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Mayfex 6 inch Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice Armored Batman figure from Medicom Toys. Now, this figure comes packaged in a window box style of packaging. You've got the figure clearly displayed. Down below, you have an image of the figure and the name and the DC Comic logo. On the side of the packaging, you have the Batman vs. Superman logo. And then on the back of the packaging, we have some images of the figure and some writing that I really can't read. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the other contents. Now, first of all, we get a figure stand. This is the typical Mafex type stand. It's clear plastic. You've got three holes on the base. And so you can put this arm piece in any of the three holes. And the arm itself, it's got three different points of articulation. And you've got little screws so you can tighten it however you want. And then you've got this little peg here up at the top. And then they give you this clamp. And again, you've got a screw so you can tighten it and loosen it and you just plug that in. So then you can turn the clamp and you can do it up and down. And then again, you can do the arm here and you can do the arm here. So I really like these Mafex figure stands. They work well with multiple kinds of figures. With this figure, we also get Batman's grapple gun like you see him use in the movie. And this is done with a metallic silver. You've got some black on the handle. You've got some nice sculpting detail with this and you've got some darker grays on here as well. So it looks pretty true to how he, uh, how it looked in the movie. And then finally we get three different pairs of hands with this figure. So you get a pair of closed fisted hands which are attached to the figure when you first open it. You get a pair of grip hands for holding the grapple gun and then you get a pair of open hands. And the detailing on these is nice. You've got some lighter metallic silver and then you've got some darker almost black color underneath that for the gloves. And then on the underside you have a lighter gray with again some more black and metallic silver to give it that kind of metal look. So I do like the detailing on these, um, all these pairs of Switch hands the hands you just remove the one you want to replace and you've got the peg on the arm and the hole in the hand and then you just put in the one that you want to plug in and that little joint does move a little bit on you but for the most part these are pretty easy to snap on and they fit nice and tight. So for the figure itself I really like the look of this figure. I like the die cast metal pieces for the armor and I think that comes off looking good especially in the light it definitely picks up the light nicely it looks like it's uh, shiny metal. I like the scratch work that you see throughout the armor especially here on the helmet. He's got the whited out eyes. I think the skin tone is pretty good. The face sculpt, I mean, you can't really see his face very much, but from the little part that you can see, I think it looks good. He's got kind of pinkish lips. He's got a soft goods cape, so it's a almost um, not quite black, but a charcoal, a very dark charcoal on the on the back side, and then the underside is a lighter gray color, and you got some stitches, and you got that kind of uh, wire on the bendy wire on the ends of the cape, so it helps you get to kind of pose it a little bit. I think I don't like about the cape is I don't like this white stitching that you can see um, on the underside. It kind of sticks out a little bit so it's a little bit glaring especially on this side of the cape so I don't really like that white stitching that you can see on it. And then he's got this strap here and this is a separate piece and you can actually remove it here on the back. It just kind of unsnaps and it goes through. They have it basically they've cut a little hole in the cape so it goes through the cape. And then he's also got a utility belt which is done with a metallic gold and this is a separate piece. It does not appear to be removable but it is separate and it does fit a little bit loosely on the figure so you can easily slide it up and down on it. Again I like the sculpting detail. I like the under part of the outfit under the armor almost looks like cloth when you're looking at it but it's actual plastic and you've got that little square pattern sculpted throughout on it so I think that comes off looking good I like how you've got some gold tips for these uh, wing things on his gloves or on his gauntlets and down here so overall this is probably my favorite looking armored Batman figure out of the three that I've gotten so far I have the 112 collective version and then of course the Mattel version and this definitely looks much better than the Mattel version so this figure stands just a little bit over six and a half inches tall, not quite six and three quarters. Here's a comparison with the 112 armored Batman figure, and I don't know, it's hard to tell. These two are very close as far as quality and everything. This one is a little sleeker looking. This one's a little wider build, so I think that's why I like this uh, Mafex one a little bit better. But these two, as far as quality, are very close, and of course you don't have the lighted up eyes on the Mafex one like you do on the 112 Collective. And here's a comparison with the Mattel DC Multiverse 6-inch Dawn of Justice armored Batman figure, and honestly, it's not even really fair to compare these two 
since this is a $20 figure and this one costs more like $75. However, I do want to note that the Mattel figure is a little bit taller, but overall quality goes definitely goes to the Mafex Batman. And then finally, here's a comparison with the DC Multiverse Superman from Dawn of Justice. Sorry, I don't have a Mafex Superman figure to give you a comparison of that one yet. And then the Mafex regular Batman figure. While they don't include the kryptonite gun with this armored Batman figure, they did include it with the regular Batman figure, and this figure will hold that gun. So for articulation, you can turn the head to the left and to the right, and he's got good down movement with the figure, but he really can't look back very much. This little uh, back piece that goes around his neck it limits some of the back movement there. You can pivot the head to the left and the right, though. Arms attached with your standard ball hinge joint, but with these shoulder pads, which do have some articulation, but they limit some of the arm movement. You can get the arm out about that much and then you can't rotate the arm all the way around because of these shoulder pads. He does have a bicep swivel. He's got a double hinged elbow so good bending there at the elbow and then he's got swivels at the wrist, hinges on the hands so good up and down movement with the hands. He has an ab crunch type joint. It's basically a ball joint so you can do it down about that much and he can look back a little bit and you can rotate a little bit. If you rotate too much then it ends up popping off so just be wary of that. Then he does have a waist swivel Again, basically the lower body is attached with the ball joint to the upper body. So you've got rotation there, and again, he can crunch down good there, and he can look back. Now you do get some gap there, but you can kind of pull the belt down to hide that if you want. The legs are attached with ball joints. You've got an inner ball joint there, so basically you can kind of pull the legs down a bit to give him more movement. He can get his leg forward pretty good, and he can do his leg back about that much. And you've got a rotation there where the ball joint is, so essentially a thigh swivel and he can do the splits about that much actually he can do this when you pull the legs out he can do the splits pretty good and when you have the legs pulled out you do get that gap between the legs and the waist has a double jointed knee so good bending at the knee and then the legs you got the hinges so you got up and down movement he's got rotation and he's got some pivot there and he's got toe articulation so a little bit of up and down movement with the toes no peg holes on the bottom of the feet but he does have the spikes on the bottom of his boots Okay, so that's my review. Overall, I like this figure. I really like the detailing. I like the die cast metal. I like the scratches on it and everything. The paint applications are good. The only thing I don't really like is I don't, again, like that white stitching on the cape. But otherwise, I think this is a really nice looking figure. Now, it's a close toss up between this one and the 112 Collective figure from Mezco. But again, I think I give a slight edge to this one as far as looks go. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't get the light up eyes and stuff. So that's pretty cool about the 112 collective version but definitely like this figure and if you like Mafex or you're just a big Dawn of Justice fan I think this is one you'll want to add to your collection. So we'll have a full image gallery up at toynewseye.com there'll be a link in the video description below. As always leave a comment let us know what you think if you're so inclined please like the video. Also if you haven't already please follow me on my Facebook Twitter and Instagram accounts I'll have links to those in the video description as well and until next time I'll catch you later.